Hey. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jukum here. Welcome back to another Pokken video. In this discussion, I will be going over all of Pokken's uh, buff and debuff mechanics. As you can see that by this giant list, we have quite a few, but a lot of them are usually just increased or decreased, so it's more like half of this, really. <laughs> I will be going in-depth with all these modifiers right here, including how certain characters may interact with stuff. The reason this isn't a video like my Dash's video on, like, a full guide on how these all work is, one, they're pretty simple, and two, there's some weird stuff that I don't think could really fit in that type of video, so we're just going to be talking about all of them at once in this video. So, to start off with, we're going to be a little simple. An attack buff gives a 20% boost. An attack down does the opposite, a 20% reduction to your attack. Subtiles 2 right here does 40 damage, so 32 and 48, 20%, basic math. One other useful thing for attack buffs, though, is that if you have them and your opponent is in burst, your weak attacks will no longer be light armored through. Otherwise, stuff like this could happen, and Empoleon would be able to attack me before I'm able to recover from this JY here, because this is a light. For the defense stuff, though, not anything more interesting, it's the exact same. This move would do 80 damage, this is now doing, I think it's like 64, I think. And the same would go for a defense down, though I will say, having a defense down on the opponent is very, very good, since a lot of characters, and this also goes for having an attack buff on yourself, can do average damage, and then you get into the absurd territory for like, this one combo that I'm gonna be doing with Subtile here. 296 you can reach the damage cap of this game because after a certain point this game starts to scale your attacks super heavily so that they do not reach 400 damage but it gets to that cap really fast and it's still around 300 if you get a good hit that said the real meat of interest in this is definitely everything below the attack and defense modifier for the speed modifier you get insanely fast even for someone like Empoleon, who's pretty slow, this makes up for his lack of speed. Characters like Blastoise and Empoleon. Pretty quick for what he is. Especially in dual face here. He, he moves really quick. I forgot how fast he moves forward. But what makes this really, really absurd? While I do not know an exact speed value, I will show a comparison of the speed buff with the normal speed for Subtile. He moves extremely fast, and these can be used for baiting. This is what a speed buff is really good for, is just baiting the opponent or getting in really quick. This also affects dashes and certain movement-based attacks, though not all of them. Good example actually right now is that Empoleon right here has a slide. He goes the exact same speed, and this doesn't affect jumps. But what this does work on is moves in field phase that rush you forward, typically the JX and homing attack. That went so fast. Actually, I did not expect him to go that fast. Uh, but a lot of moves like my Champs JX, where he moves forward to lock onto the opponent, he will rush down really, really quickly at them. That said, if you have a speed down on yourself, you'll be moving super sluggishly. Septile is moving like pre-patch Empoleon in this case right here. Jeez, and I can only imagine what Empoleon's looking like right now. This will also affect those same things I mentioned before. Dashes are slower, those air attacks are slower, everything is slower. For Synergy Burst Enhance, this one's pretty interesting. So, as the name suggests, I accidentally recorded over that slot. Oops. Okay, so as the name suggests, this doesn't change anything when you're out of burst. This is doing 30 damage. However, now it starts to happen. It is a 20% defense buff, but also a 20 defense attack buff. Only in burst mode. It can be pretty devastating when you think about how this stacks with the burst mode already doing, I think it's around 10% more damage without the buff. Yeah, 10%. It can get really absurd, and especially if you're in Rage, which I will also mention right now, because Rage is also another wonderful multiplier that the devs, the, the, the devs, the developers really, really enjoyed putting into this game. Because what Rage will do is it gives you a modifier just like Synergy Burst Enhance at all times for both attack and defense. The weird part is, is that it gives you 20% for attack, as you can see right here, just like the attack buff from before, but it gives you a 30% defense buff which you could see reaching the 20s for this 40 base damage attack. These all stack, as I mentioned. You could have a defense buff on yourself, you could have a synergy enhancement, you could have burst happening to all at the same time. I did it for the wrong characters. And you will just be doing no damage if you have all of these on you at the same time, which for some characters is a possibility. Pikachu Libre in particular can wall bounce herself at the very beginning of the match and give herself a defense buff. She has a very easy synergy burst at 100cc and having Jirachi to give a synergy burst enhanced, I think it's the only way to get synergy burst enhanced actually, uh, we'll just give that to her. And if she's enraged, then she has another buff. This is why if you ever hear in the community that Libre is just unkillable and tankier than most of the cast despite having 570 HP, not even the highest HP in the game, it's because of that. 
that. That is the reason. And I didn't mention this till now, but for the defense buff and the synergy enhancement, in burst mode, attack buff will still beat through that light armor. This makes the attack buff really good for characters who have really strong lights and want to use them against bursted opponents so they can play better in neutral against them. Because that is the thing you have to be aware of is that, oh, I can't use my usual jump forward JY, jump back JY to try to pressure them from afar. To my next point, which is the all crits buff. The all crits buff does exactly what you think it does. Makes everything as a crit. Crits can even occur mid-combo if you were to use Victini. Lots of characters get changes depending on if it stuff is a crit. Septile, for instance, his 5x will crumple without having to be fully charged. And as for the no critical hits debuff... Wait, what happens if I do this? Yep, that, that's definitely a no, no critical hits. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, sorry, anyway, we're gonna have Empoleon grab here, and as you can see, this is not going to affect him at all. This is a decent debuff, I think it's not very spectacular. It's on Umbreon of all things, but Umbreon's mostly used for its frame 1 invincibility. It's just kind of an added bonus that makes sense to have, considering you do have an all crits buff. They might have just added it to Umbreon because they felt like it might be needed <laughs> to have an opposite effect like that. But what I really want to get into for these crit stuff, and just crits in general, uh, they give a 20% boost to the first hit of an attack, and then all hits preceding, uh, factoring in scaling and everything to uh, get a 10% boost. So you see right here, Septile's 5Y, each hit does 10 damage. The first hit did 12, uh, the second one did 11 damage. Now, what happens if the opponent is crit with this grab right here? 108. Septile's grab does 90 damage. This gets even more powerful when you give them a defense down, because... It while it doesn't stack exactly, it still does a load of damage. That did 144, and if I wanted to even show how absurd it could get, that's base 150. I'm doing 226 for one grab. It scales a bit weird. Uh, it only does 40% more damage. How this works is that it's doubling down on the defense down modifier while also including the crit buff. So you got the 20% plus the 10% whatever, and then basically 40% down for the debuff. I don't know what they were going exactly for that one, but it is good to note that this will do a lot of damage, and you might want to look out if you are using counterattacks on Wake Up while having a defense down, because it could do a load of damage, especially for certain characters that might have high damage grabs. Even 90 grab is doing 144. Grabs can go to 120 or even 150 from a champ in particular, and Charizard. But what gets even weirder is when you add a defense down to the opponent instead. So you would expect it to be only 20% less, maybe s around the same damage, maybe slightly less. Remember, Septiles only does 90 damage. And as you can see right here, it is doing 72. Calculations of it are really, really weird, and I'm not sure how it works exactly, but there is a list that I will be showing on screen right now with all the different modifiers that will affect this with attack downs, attack buffs, defense downs, defense buffs, with crits, without crits, that was made by a community, mem community member named Fosh. This is the first time I've seen it in making of this video, but it's very interesting and it's good to know considering it can go as low as 50% but go as high as 190% for the base damage of something like a grab. And this is why they call Libre unkillable, because notice how I don't have the crit buff anymore. Notice how it did 72 damage? The best way to really just put it is that it's going to do the exact same amount of damage, which also means counterattack can be super, super good on wake up. You knock the opponent down, they do a counter, and if they hit your counter, then you just attack back at them, unless it's like a safe jab on wake up. If you do grab them, they risk nothing, they don't take more damage. They essentially ignore the crit buff. And it gets even weirder when you add an attack buff and then also crit them. Since it'll do this, it'll do more damage, but not as much as you might think it would. I'm only doing 10% more damage in this case. And like I said, through Fosh's testing, we were able to figure out more, but those are the most notable ones I wanted to go through right now. And for the final thing that really affects what crits is that when you do it, you get some more synergy, which, you know, is just the, the topping on top of all of it. You know, it's just a dang cool, yeah, more reward. I get more damage, take less damage. Now I get meter. Whoa. Now I know half the video is probably just going to be me talking about these crits. So let's go on to something else, which is the no synergy burst. You, you can tell what's happening right now. I'm trying my hardest to spam Septile's very bad synergy burst. Worse than Lucario's, in fact. The debuff is really that simple, though some extra notes I should mention is that when you phase shift, you don't get any meter. You can get meter from using attacks, as you can see in the bottom left. It's going slightly. In field phase, you get a lot of that. In dual phase, you don't get that unless you're hitting the opponent. 
which you do get some, but you're incapable of getting these synergy nuggets added to your bar. If you're in burst mode, while you do get the benefits of being in burst, you can't use any burst attacks. So it really sucks if you were to get hit by Eveltal, the only source of this debuff, and you're just unable to use your burst at all, or if you are in burst, because you wanted to get a uh, comeback on your opponent or something, and then you just can't use your burst attack for big damage or to relieve yourself from pressure. I know Sceptile has a counter-based one, which can sometimes be used for that purpose, but he did unlucky there. Next is additional jumps, which is a pretty fun one. It gives you a second jump that goes not as high as the first, but still enough to where you could delay your landing and do stuff like this for cross-ups. You're able to use it out of many options that put you in the air, such as Sceptile 6 blah, blah, I cancel here. And those same field phase moves where they go flying through the air like with Champ's GX can actually be canceled with the jump and then he's able to perform a different action. Whether he wants to do something like in particular from a champ using his JX and then going into a rolling air grab or something like that. It's very neat. It's just not too useful. It's only on Poplio, which also gives an attack buff, by the way. Litten is used more for uh, reference in that support duo, but I think it's very underrated. I know Shadow Me 2 players like using it sometimes, but not much so for everyone else in the cast. And as another note real quick before we go to our last debuff is that when you attack out of it right away, you fall down to the ground a lot more quickly. When using it like this for Empoleon, he rises into the air, he doesn't fall or anything, but when using it, this can lead to a lot of pressure and is a lot of the reasons why Shabitudes do like using this is because it makes JY's a lot more consistent for doing air dashes, sort of like how Mewtwo does uh, his air dash combos. Though this doesn't apply to all attacks, only certain attacks. And now for our last one, which is only applied by Decidueye when he uses Spirit Shackle or his dual phase grab, is a no support lock. It's just like the one I mentioned before with Synergy Burst, except for not as many unique quirks. Your support still charges, it just will not be able to be used even if it is fully charged. See right here, still charging, but on the bright side, I don't have it available to me yet. <laughs> Before wrapping up this video, I do want to mention a few things related to certain characters and other mechanics. Not only do I want to show this list of uh, showing what buffs and debuffs each of them give, I do want to note that whenever there's a buff on screen, it means they're buffing themselves, and a debuff means they're debuffing the opponent. The only exception to this is Krogunk, as he's a character who can give himself debuffs through Acupressure, or give the opponent buffs through Poison Jab. These are both done through RNG, and he doesn't really have any control through it. Next is Decidueye, whose Release X, at the cost of some meter, will prolong debuffs he grants to them, which is really good for him considering that he has both a no support one that I just mentioned, but also using Feather Dance, he can attack lower the opponent, as well as any other debuffs he has by supports. Magneton is a very interesting case where it will change support depending on if it's in field phase or dual phase. It will always give a synergy down debuff, but if it's in field phase, it'll grant a speed down as well, or in dual phase, instead of the speed down, you'll get an attack down. Mew is an RNG buffing support where sometimes it'll give you nothing, sometimes it'll give you an attack buff, sometimes it'll get you a crit buff, and sometimes it'll get you both. The Mimikyu support will grant an attack down and a synergy weaken debuff onto the opponent, but if the opponent were to hit your counter armor on its startup, up, uh, you actually get an attack buff that you can use yourself, and it lasts for quite a while. And lastly, a lot of changes will happen to characters if they have a buff or not. As I mentioned before, having an all crits buff will make it easier to land lots of different moves, such as Sceptile 5x to get their crit benefits. But besides the crits, there are certain characters who do have interactions with the buff system. That would be Aegislash, who's the biggest example. He can enhance himself. He has better moves that can be used more often because they aren't punishable on block. He does chip damage on block as well. And while not related to him giving himself two buffs, but when he does his unsheathing eight times, mostly through Iron Head, he will have an enhanced Fury Cutter. He basically becomes an Ultra Slash. Blastoise will have counter armor on the startup of Water Pulse, though he will always have this inburst even without a buff. Krogunk will change a lot depending on if he has a certain amount of debuffs or buffs. There's a few of them. Chandler's Hex will do more damage the more debuffs the opponent has. If they have one, it'll do good damage, and if they have both, it face shifts and does a ton of damage. This also gets rid of the debuffs themselves. You know, to prevent her from abusing it a lot, which is something she was capable of doing in the past through a glitch. <laughs> There's probably a few more things for certain characters that are really minor that I could bring up, but for the most part, I think I got you all covered with the mechanics of Pokin's buffing system and all the intricacies that they have. Let me know in the comments below if there is more mechanics you are interested in learning about in depth like this. I hope you all enjoyed, wishing you the best, and see you all for more Pokin content.
Oh no, Kaskun with the attack buff. Though no, Kaskun with the synergy burst enhancement. Oh no, Kaskun with the all crits in synergy burst. With the defense down. With the synergy burst weakened. Maximum damage. This is a very healthy number.